Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the release webinar of WSO2 Enterprise Integrated for the release of 650. And uh, I'm Sasikala Kortigode, an associate tech lead of the integration team of WSO2. And we have Asanka Bevira, who's a tech lead of the integration team of WSO2 with us. Um, so, um, if you look back, uh, it's been quite a while since the last release of WSO2 Enterprise Integrator, which is the 640 release, which happened in October 2018. Um, and we've, we've been focusing on developing the, the, the developer experience of the integration developer. So if we look back, uh, ESB and the enterprise integrator has been there in the market for quite a long time. And the runtime has been tested and improved significantly. But uh, in this release, we specifically focused on improving the developer experience. So um, while uh, developing the experience, one thing we, we found out that we could uh, improve was the integrate was the experience of development that is where we have introduced an integration studio which is the all new tool for your development um, so uh, and uh, we have since uh, the micro integrator profile is the developer centric profile the runtime of the enterprise integrator we have looked into ways of improving the developer experience of the micro integrator profile as well. And then we'll be talking about how we have uh, improved the runtime, the runtime which is used in the micro integrator and, as, uh, and, the, micro, and the enterprise integrator as well. Uh, then we'll be talking about how you could migrate your applications uh, from the previous versions which is almost a seamless uh, migration and we'll be talking about that at the end and finally we'll be talking about the future improvements we are about to do uh, in the upcoming releases so as i said earlier uh, we have introduced an all new integration studio uh, this gives you a unique experience that you have never experienced with the previous developer tools so if we look back if with the previous releases of Enterprise Integrator, what we had was an Eclipse runtime, an Eclipse redistribution with the WSO2 Developer Studio uh, features, features installed. So there, there was actually um, two ways of, where, of how you could use the Developer Studio previously. You could either uh, download a PO Eclipse distribution and uh, install the WSO2 Developer Studio features on top of it. Or there was there was the we we distributed a dedicated uh, WSO2 Developer Studio features installed Eclipse distribution where you could use that purely. But in this release, uh, we have introduced the all new WSO2 integration studio, which is still based on the Eclipse runtime. So, so you don't have to worry that you have been using the previous uh, Eclipse and this will be so different because this is, this, this is basically based on the same Eclipse runtime. So you can, you can use the shortcuts and the knowledge and the experiences you have gained through uh, working with the previous developer studio. Basically, uh, what we have done here is we have uh, packed the Eclipse runtime with, with only the WSO2 developer studio features installed so that uh, this is specifically dedicated for uh, the tooling, tooling experiences. So this is what what is to be noticed is that this is a WSO2 branded standard application, uh, which is based on Eclipse. Uh, while we were while talking with the customers, one thing we saw was that we could enhance the ex developer experience through embedding the JDK. So if if we uh, look back, uh, the the JDK the the Eclipse runtime is not embedded in the JDK. And previously, our users had to uh, 
configure the JDK depend depending on the Eclipse versions they were they were using. But in this in the with the introduction of the uh, integration studio, we have embedded Adopt Open JDK so that uh, you don't have to configure the the integration studio and you can just uh, start with your work workflow right ahead. And then in order to, so the main focus was that we can, uh, to improve the workflow from development to testing and debugging up to deployment. So one thing, one of the main things we did was embedding the micro integrator inside the developer studio so that you don't have to go out of the developer studio or you don't have to configure any servers in order to test your applications. So this is, as I explained earlier, this is a completely revamped developer experience. So if we if we have a look at the previous view, it was something similar to this. So um, you could you could see uh, you could see the mediators in a plain background, but now this is the old new theme we are introducing. So if you look, this is more appealing and uh, more colorful we have changed the we have changed the icons then we have changed we have if you if you have a look on the right panel so we have uh, templates and help guides to uh, walk you through the development process and then uh, we have icons icons which are appealing and we have improved we have talked with our uh, US UX expertise and then we have improved on your experience to give you more uh, appealing display uh, then we also have introduced a properties pane which you can see on the bottom uh, this is a form based properties pane if you if you recall the previous uh, developer studio it was a plain table where you, it, it was a key it was key values but now we have introduced a, a form-based properties pane uh, to be more meaningful. And then, as I said, so this release was mainly focused on improving the experience from development, from getting started up to development and testing and debugging and deployment. So one thing we see is like, there may be a, a large scale of uh, users of the integration studio who might not know what type of a project they might to create how to how to use the integration studio so what so we are guiding you through the steps of creating a project so if if we recall the previous one we have why when we are going to create a project we had to know what type of a project we have to create so we have to we had to search uh, through the type of the project to create but now we have guided you on the left panel you can see uh, what type we, we ask you what type of a project you need to create whether it's an esb project whether it's a ds project whether it's a bps project or whatever then you can basically um, create a new project or you can even open your so one thing to notice that um, even though we have revamped the, the 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 developer experience of the integration studio, uh, it's still based on the Eclipse runtime, and we have we have developed it in a way that it's uh, totally and completely backward compatible. So you, there, there's no worry. You can you can go ahead and open your projects that were developed using the previous versions of the developer studio. And then, if you're a, if you're an old new user who who the, who have who has no clue about the integration studio, we we are here to help you with a template guide. So basically, we have some uh, some template projects which you can click on, and then you can see the development flow and learn on how to create your own projects. So basically, once you create, once you click on one of these projects, you will get a view as shown now. So basically, we have clicked on the Hello World project here. And then on the right panel, you see a, a, a simple descript, a description on the template. So it says, it says, that it describes the scenario that we are going to test. And then it gives you steps 
how to uh, run this sample using the WSO2 micro integrator. So as I as we as I told you earlier, uh, the micro integrator is embedded. So we are we are uh, we are trying to make you use the micro integrator because it it eases your workflow. But if you are actually if you are use if you are an old user who's familiar with using the developer studio with the enterprise integrator, of course we have that capability. So you can just um, have a look at how to run run it on the enterprise integrator. So basically, here you you get the 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 workflow, the development flow, the mediation flow of the Hello World project. So it's it's basically creating a request and responding back to the customer. So the next thing is once you click on these icons on the work pane, which which are mediators, uh, it will be loading its properties. As I said earlier, we have uh, revamped this properties pane to be more appealing and more meaningful. And if you if you have a look here, uh, you see that for each property, we have we have we guide you through 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 explaining what what uh, the properties are meant to be and what values are accepted. And all throughout the developer studio. Uh, we'll we'll have we'll have tool tips to to describe what what each and every mediator means so that you don't have to like you don't have to go out of the integration studio to find out what this mediator means or to or to use know how to use it so we, we are basically guiding you within the integration studio itself so next uh, next uh, one of one of the main improvements we did to improve the developer experience was uh, context aware code completion so if it refers to the term intelligence because we 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 do so we do suggest on the on the codes that are, that need to be added uh, based on the context so if we take the example that is shown here uh, we have added a payload factory mediator and once you click on this, it suggests you to add the format tag because it's something that needs to go with the payload factory. And also it, it provides you code completion. It, one thing is suggestions and the other thing is it gives you code completions. And uh, one of the next most important uh, improvements we did to for the developer experience was Synapse validations and so what 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 if we are to understand what that means it means that um, once we add the developer the workflow it will it will validate the mediator workflow uh, through the synapse runtime so basically what we have done here is we have added some mediator after a send mediator which is not valid which is not valid in the runtime so here itself, uh, here once you add a, add a mediator itself, uh, it gives you a warning saying that um, it's it's prohibited. And then if you if you switch the design that the the previous view was about the design view, and if you even if you switch with the source view, uh, so this is basically the source view of the design view that was uh, showed previously. Uh, so the source view will show you a warning saying that there is an inc incorrect uh, configuration. So if you hover on this warning icon, you will be shown something like this. So this is uh, so saying uh, what the what the what the error is and what could be done to overcome the problem. Then one of the most uh, prominent en enhancements we did for the integration studio was the enhancements for the data mapper. So, so as I told you earlier, uh, we wanted to improve the developer experience from the development uh, to deployment itself. So, so once you click on the data mapper mediator, it will be adding you these uh, boxes which are self-explanatory. So if you recall the previous versions, it was just adding uh, some boxes where you needed to know what you have to do with these mediators. But this is self-explanatory, so you can 
you can load an input file and generate the input schema and load an output file and generate the output schema and you can uh, uh, configure the input schema and the output schema in live so once you generate generate the input schema loading uh, loading an input file one thing it would do is it would uh, it would provide you a sam sample input data so that you can try out the data mapper so this uh, trying out of the data mapper was was an all new feature we have introduced so that so, so that you don't have to go out of the integration studio for for you to test the mapping of the data mapper it will simply provide the content you have added uh, for <clears throat> for generating the input schema and it would uh, do the mapping when you when you click on try out it will do the mapping and it will generate the output data and if if there is any error in uh, in the conversion it will show that as well so that so the main focus was that one, un, until you are done you don't have to go out of the integration studio so uh, one of the other enhancements was the introduction of the property media property group mediator so this is basically a, an all new mediator uh, so let's take a simple example even the most simple example uh, would have as as you all know we would have multiple properties included in a single view so so this is one of the basic simplest examples where it has just three uh, properties if you look at this you can see that the screen is just full of these three properties and the send mediator so once we add some some more mediators you will not be able to see the whole view and it will be um, like uh, quite hard for you to track the flow like that so what we did was we introduced a whole new property group mediator where you could simply add like you could simply add here all the properties you wanted that way it will take a minimal space so that you can uh, you can be focusing on actual on your actual development flow rather than just uh, going through the properties and the mediators and the view so if we if we go if we switch to the source view there's no much of a difference so this is this is purely done to enhance the developer experience who, for the users who are using the integration studio so if we look at the source view it's simply it's simply uh, adding the tag uh, property group it wrapping the properties we have added all throughout this time so as i said earlier we wanted to we wanted to improve the experience from development up, up until the end so we have provided you with the built in testing and debugging support <coughs> so we 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 were we were capable of doing this with the with the introduction of the micro integrator profile as an in, as an inbuilt server so basically you just have to click on your project and <clears throat> select to run it on the micro integrator then you would be able to see that the, the micro integrator profile has started and you should be able to invoke the services you want and you can just test them without without having to go out of the integration studio then uh, with the with the increased uh, interest in cloud native technologies uh, we we wanted to uh, support we wanted to support docker within the integration studio itself we wanted to take out your burden of having to create uh, docker images manually by after exporting the car applications you create within the developer studio so what we did was with the introduction of the integration studio was the was introducing the capability to export expose your car applications as a docker image with with a single click so what you have to basically do is you have to click on the the project and you just have to click on the option to generate a docker image and then you will be have you you just have to enter the name of the docker image and the tag and that will be it so once you once the image is created you should be able to list the docker images and weave the <coughs> weave the image you just created so uh, uh, if i if i am to give an introduction for you about the 
integration cloud i hope you all are familiar with with our integration cloud uh, which is our integration platform as a service so 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 we wanted to improve your experience in getting this your applications deployed into our integration cloud because we wanted to let you do it through the integration integration studio itself so what we are promising is to get your application de deployed in our integration cloud under one minute so what, what you have to do is it's it's quite simple what you have to do is you just have to click on the project and you have to cl click on the option to deploy your project into the integration cloud and then and then you need to so basically you need to have an integration an account in our integration cloud for this you just have to enter your information and once you enter the information you'll be able to view the view your applications in our integration cloud so it's as simple as that so if we if we recap what we have done so far so we have improved all phases in the development in the development phase so so that you we are we are improving your end-to-end -end experience with the with the introduction of the integration studio so as to the additional improvements we have done uh, we have enhanced the property view as i told earlier and then then we have introduced default values and missing properties so we have taken away the burden of you having to define all the properties that are related to a particular mediator and then we have done significant improvements for the tool palette to for, for for to improve the usability and then we have improved on uh, dependency jar resolving capabilities so the, what this basically means is that like, if you have maybe let's say a db report mediator or a db lookup mediator where you have to interact with a particular database so we provide you the capability of downloading the the relevant jar the relevant connector within the integration studio itself then we have <clears throat> worked on uh, concurrent resource loading optimization so that the performance is improved and you can switch through your the pains as soon as possible uh, one thing i want to highlight is i have been telling this all throughout this time but, but uh, this the integration studio is is a whole new revamped studio but still it's compatible with the previous versions, with the previous uh, the, the the car applications, all the other applications that have been created using the previous versions of the developer studio, that is because we are we are we are using the same Eclipse runtime, and you have you don't have to worry about anything regarding that. So so please do subscribe to our integration studio webinar series, uh, which is upcoming in the next weeks. Okay, uh, now let's have a look at what we have uh, in the micro integrator profile. So you all know that uh, micro integrator profile is the cloud native uh, version of the integrator profile that we have we provide with uh, the enterprise integrator. So we are we are really excited uh, to announce this on this special day where we are the cloud native enthusiasts are celebrating the Kubernetes uh, fifth birthday. So let's uh, start. On what we have so uh, the most uh, so one of the significant changes that we have done uh, with the distribution of micro integrated integrator is this so if you if you have worked with the micro integrator profile that was uh, introduced in uh, w3 ei640 so it was provided as a as a runtime and then and that runtime was available alongside all the other Sometimes that was there in the previous EI versions. So whoever uh, wants to use the micro integrator, they had to run the integ integration, uh, the micro integrator runtime that was available, that is available in uh, the EI distribution. And if they if they want to separate it out and use it in a Docker image or whatever uh, con uh, uh, the packaging, whatever the packaging that they use, they have to run the profile creator and then create the micro integrator uh, binary and then use that so this is sometimes uh, at that at some additional steps to the developers who want to develop integrations with micro integrator 
so what we thought was we we thought of uh, separating the micro integrator out as a separate binary and then provide all the other runtimes as the wso2 wso2 ei 650 distribution and and the users who want to use micro integrator they can separately download uh, the wso2 mi100 uh, binary and that will only contain the micro integrator runtime and then they can use this for all the purposes that they used uh, the micro integrator in a 640 release and then we have some additional uh, distribution mechanisms as well for the micro integrator but just for now if you are using it as a vir uh, virtual mas machine you can you, you just have to use the wso2 mi distribution so just to give you get some background uh, on the concepts and the things that we have introduced uh, in the uh, micro integrator uh, profile i'll just briefly go through a few of the basic concepts that we we, we want to uh, emphasize so so if we take a typical microservices architecture uh, what we have is a collection of microservices for specific tasks and then these microservices normally talk with uh, very lightweight uh, communication mechanisms like http so uh, uh, normally these uh, we we, we, uh, we have multiple services since we want to distribute uh, how we develop uh, the complete system and then normally these different microservices are developed by different teams so it, uh, there can be microservices uh, which use uh, different technologies and different communication mechanisms so still even though it is microservices architecture we still have the integration problem uh, in these environments so for that one we can easily use the micro integrator to develop different integration uh, solutions and then deploy that as a, a composite service in your microservices architecture and and this uh, the, the the advantage of this is you can uh, you can apply all the eip patterns that you know and even the uh, new uh, patterns like choreography pattern you can use uh, with the micro integrator since we have an extensive support for all different type of connectors and additionally so you can use uh, a micro integrator to uh, expose whatever the proprietary legacy systems and the uh, saas applications that you have and you already use in your enterprise to the microservices uh, environment uh, so with that one we have introduced a new uh, concept uh, in this uh, release and uh, we call it the the micro integrator immut immutable docker images so um, how this works is normally uh, an integration developer uh, is using the integration studio to develop uh, the integration solutions and normally uh, at the end of uh, the release uh, the development uh, life cycle we will end up with a carbon application and then what we have done in this uh, this release is we have introduced a micro integrator base image so this base image you can use uh, to write a doc you can use a docker image and then uh, create a, an application uh, specific docker image uh, packing this carbon application and wh why we call this immutable docker images uh, the one thing that we want to uh, emphasize is earlier we 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 were kind of uh, we were we, we were able to use uh, we were able to mount an external file system and have the carbon application and all those stuff there and run the micro in integrator uh, as a runtime and and whenever we do changes in the file system uh, the the artifacts uh, uh, we we have to re restart since we don't have the hot deployment so uh, but even when we uh, if, if we have hot deployment again the problem will be that if we do something like rolling updates and then and then uh, things like that so we are there can be some inconsistency so what we wanted to do is we we wanted to create an immutable uh, docker image with all the artifacts that we do not change during uh, during the ci cd cycles or any any uh, any uh, life cycle like that and then have that as a single unit where we can we can do extensive testing and push uh, after verification to the production so how you can do it is in the docker file you just have to use uh, the the docker uh, the correct 
base image and you just have to copy the carbon application to the deployment folder and that will create uh, these application specific uh, immutable docker image so i will i will go through how you can use these uh, immutable docker images to deploy it in different uh, environments so just to give a brief uh, uh, idea about what you can do with these docker images we have two versions of the docker uh, based docker image uh, one is the community version which you can down pull from the uh, docker hub and uh, what you have to do is you, you just have to use the uh, wso2 slash micro integrator colon 100 as the base image name and, and we also provide for all the uh, uh, subscribers uh, subscription customers uh, they can use their warm credentials and then access the wso2 docker registry to get uh, get the up updated uh, micro integrator profile so the difference is here now you have to use the docker.wso2.com slash micro integrator uh, colon 100 as the base docker image so the advantage is you will get all the bug fixes and and security updates and everything that we do this for this release when you pull from this uh, docker registry so you just have to configure your ci cd to pull from this and it, it will automatically uh, have a, a, the updated most updated version of the uh, micro integrator so uh, in the previous uh, release uh, what we have what we had to uh, get information about the artifacts was just a rest api so you just have you have to use that rest api whenever you want to get information about an api or a proxy service but this this uh, again is not a very good uh, options for a developer and so to to help those developers and simplify their life uh, so we have provided an uh, cli tool uh, which you can separately download from the uh, wso2.com website and this uh, tool is capable of uh, communicating with the uh, remote micro uh, integrator uh, runtimes and get uh, all the information regarding the deployed artifacts uh, like uh, the deployed uh, apis carbon applications proxy services uh, tasks like that so you 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 just have to download and then configure uh, initialize the tool and then you can straight away use it to query any detail that you want and we have done a, a slight uh, improvement to the existing rest api as well earlier what we had was uh, just we had just two resources uh, to query on apis and proxies and uh, but in this uh, in micro integrator 100 we have uh, added quite a few uh, uh, resources as well to get more information regarding the deployed artifacts so you can query about uh, so uh, we, we already had apis and proxy services now we have we can query about applications tasks sequences endpoints uh, about inbound endpoints and then get information re related to those stuff. Uh, so, uh, so I'll, I'll explain. So, I, I in, pre in the previous slide, I told that these uh, the Docker images we can you, we can use the base Docker images to create an immutable application specific Docker images. So, one requirement is when we have an immutable Docker images. So, we 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 need to be able to deploy this Docker image in different environments. But typically, when we take different environments, these different en environments have different endpoints. Like if we if we take a staging environment, we normally have a, a mocked endpoints, and in a production environment, we have the real endpoints. So we need to have the capability to change these endpoints depending on the environment. So what how we do it with the micro integrator is, you can use uh, environment variables to define the endpoints in different environments how you do it is when you define different endpoints you can use uh, the uh, dollar system colon prefix and a variable name to refer to an environment variable and then and these different environment variables you can easily define in different environments so if you're using an environment like uh, if you are if you are deploying in a docker environment uh, the, def uh, defining an environment is a environment variable is a very trivial task so this this we hope that this is a this is a must have feature and we have implemented it in this version 
so and when we talk about uh, the distribution size this distribution size is a, a important parameter when you are use, when you are working with uh, cloud native technologies like yeah, getting it getting a smaller uh, uh, distribution size help you to quickly scale up and scale down in different different environments so so previously what we had was the the micro integrator went out as a runtime in the enterprise integrator the zip file and then you have to use the profile create and get the scaled down version and but uh, which does just have the stuff related to micro integrator and that one typically uh, was a it, it was 231 mb so in this release we have separated it out and and done some optimizations and and reduced it to 137 mb so that's like uh, more than 40 percent uh, reduction so this this helps you to pull these different uh, uh, artifacts quickly and deploy them in the different environments so i'll just uh, go through the uh, the developer workflow a typical integration engineer who's working on a micro integration solution would go through when you use uh, this, these different tools that you would require so we first have the setup stage where you just download all the required tools like uh, wso2 integration studio uh, docker git uh, kubectl and stuff like that will help you run these different artifacts and then uh, and then after you have set up these environments you will you can straight away start on developing the integration solution so only thing that you would need to de develop an integration solution is to uh, is the is our tooling called wso2 integration studio in there you can use graphical or, or the uh, textual weave uh, to develop different uh, integration solutions so after you have done uh, develop the basic uh, uh, develop your required integration solution you can use you you again you only need the ws3 integration studio tool and you can create a carbon application and which consists of all these integration artifacts and then since we have packaged the micro integrator inside uh, ws2 integration studio you can deploy those artifacts in a, a micro integrator instance within the integration studio and then as the first fourth step you can uh, iteratively test and then debug and then improve this uh, integration artifact so you can use uh, tools like soap ui postman and then the capabilities that you have uh, we have included in ws3 integration for debugging you can use that to debug any issue that you encounter and iteratively iteratively improve so after normally doing this step the developers starts are almost done and the only step that you have is to publish these different artifacts that you have developed so uh, we can do it in several ways one simple way is that you can commit all the integra integration artifacts to the version control system and then you can uh, the uh, then the ci cd system can pick up that uh, artifacts and build 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 the uh, required docker image and then push to the uh, production system after doing the uh, verification or oh, you can also create an immutable uh, docker image yourself within the tooling and then then provide it for testing so either way you can you after developing you have to publish the stuff so let's have a look at what happens after publishing so this is the recommended ci cd workflow that we we think that will help uh, the organizations uh, quickly push changes to the production environment so as i have mentioned earlier normally we would have our integration artifacts in a version control system and then we have uh, we have provided the base docker image uh, in the uh, in a docker registry like docker hub or the wso2 registry so we just have to configure our uh, ci cd uh, tool to pull from the uh, docker registry and, and then build the integra integration artifact and create the uh, immutable container image and then as the next step we can then deploy this uh, immutable docker image in a staging environment and and then uh, we can deploy uh, whatever the required mock, uh, mock backends or mock services in the uh, staging environment and run the integration tests to verify that we have not broken anything and, and our functionality is uh, working correctly after we have done all those verification steps we can push the uh, tested uh, docker image 
to the production environment and here also we can uh, if we have specific uh, environment where things like environment variables and then uh, deployment related stuff we can take them from a version control system and deploy into the production uh, so uh, another thing that we have we since we have we now have a concept called immutable docker image uh, it's, it's very easy to deploy uh, the integration solutions solutions that you are you have developed targeting the micro integrator into a kubernetes cluster what you have to do is you can you can just write a kubernetes deployment camel with all the uh, deployment details that you want to be there in the kubernetes cluster so you can specify how many nodes you want how you want to scale how you want to update and everything you can specify in the kubernetes deployment camel and then using uh, the kubectl tool you can easily deploy it through the kubernetes cluster uh, so next uh, we'll be going through the uh, runtime improvements we have done uh, with the release of wso2 ea650 uh, so we have done uh, we have provided the native json support for 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 a number of mediators so this means that uh, it's not that we didn't have the JSON support. We we had the JSON support, but we have uh, improved the JSON support in a way that it's more performant and it's convenient to the users. So we have provided it in a number of mediators. That is the iterate mediator, the aggregate mediator, the enrich mediator. Uh, so that so that you can when, whenever you want to process the payload, you can use use. A simply use a JSON eval to process the to access the payload uh, to to be more performant. So, in in addition to that, we have also provided the inline uh, specification of the J, J, of a JSON payload in Enrich Mediator uh, when you are mapping it through an inline type. And another thing we have done for the JSON support is the support for data services. So we have enhanced it in a way that uh, we, we have changed the request format from previous to now. So basically, uh, when data services were exposed as REST services, previously you had to send the request in a way that uh, they are prefixed with either post or put that is the 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 method so we have removed that burden we have taken that burden away from you so that you can you can simply focus on sending the request alone you don't have to prefix it with the 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 method you sent so we have done the same we have done the same for batch requests as well so earlier you had to you had to prefix the batch request and each request within the batch request uh, with the method you send, but now you can just simply uh, send the request you need in the format you want. And we have uh, done improvements in the in the area of box carrying. Uh, so 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 it did not have the JSON support for for request boxes previous previously. So now we have introduced the JSON support for box carrying in data so data data services so that you can work easily and then we have improved in observability perspectives so basically we have provided the capability of integrating the enterprise integrator or the micro integrator with uh, the prometheus server so we basically expose our metrics endpoints so that the prometheus server can pull the metrics and the, and you can you can configure it you can you you can weave the statistics through grafana or, or the prometheus web ui or whatever you want in in the in the way you want so basically this is this is a weave of uh, what, what, what once we how you what you would see once uh, prometheus is integrated with the enterprise integrator so this is basically weaving uh, uh, the number of messages received for some for, for, for the APIs for the resources we have. So basically, we will be exporting a number of uh, metrics, and you would be able to weave those in the way you want. 
So if we go through the other runtime improvements, uh, we have provided the OData support for MongoDB. And then we have done some, uh, some improvements in the area of message processes in a way that you can uh, handle poison messages. That means that previously, one, once a poison messages, message comes into a message processor, it was going in a cycle that we were not able to remove the poison messages message but now we have uh, ad added the capability of handling it removing the poison messages whenever you need and there are my many more uh, bug fixes and improvements done for the runtime which affects the enterprise integrated runtime as well as the micro integrated runtime uh, you can weave them through going to our github repository so if we go through the steps of migrating from pre old versions uh, so you would be using ESB or Enterprise Integrator 6.3 or versions prior to Enterprise 6.3.0 old. So for, for each of those versions, what we recommend is an incremental migration, which means that you would have to uh, keep migrating for the next version until the last version, which is EI 6.5.0. But from uh, EI 6.4.0, the migration is seamless. Uh, basically, you don't have to do anything other than replacing your binaries. But keep in mind, uh, as we explained earlier with the micro integrated profile, uh, we have changed uh, some REST API endpoints, the configurations of REST API endpoints as to the port that is being set up and the request and response format. So, Keep in mind that if you were using, if you were using some applications to access these APIs, you would mi you would need to uh, migrate them. But other than that, uh, there is nothing to be done on your C the Carbon applications. You just have to replace your product binaries uh, when you are migrating from EI six four zero to six five zero. So if we go through the future improvements, um, uh, we are planning to introduce an integrator based on Ballerina, uh, which is a code-based integration development language. And then we are planning to continue on uh, enhancing the integration studio. Uh, we are planning to introduce introduce a testing framework so that now, now if, we, if, we, if we have a look at what's going on now, we still have to test the frame, test your development workflow by um, deploying a CV app and testing. But we are planning on improving your experience uh, by introducing a new uh, test framework where you could test your mediation flow uh, without having to deploy C apps. Uh, then we are planning to improve the integration of the enterprise integrator as well as the micro integrator. Uh, with the with with cloud native technologies, so to make the developers life easier. Uh, then uh, we are also going to uh, introduce a tool based on Visual Studio Code. So the thing is, uh, we wanted to help the users who are familiar with the Visual Studio Code. So we wanted to we wanted to introduce a new Visual Studio Code uh, based tool so that the integration development is easier for those users. So, um, so that's it. Uh, you can ask questions if you have any. OK, well, we have one question. Uh, the question was, the question is, uh, since there is a separate distribution for mi micro integrator, uh can we use vom like previously so uh in this release actually there are uh, two ways that we distribute the micro integration runtime uh, one is uh, as a separate uh, distribution uh, called wso2mi10000zip uh, which is like the previous one so uh, so you can use the vom with that and the only difference is the product uh, ID that you have to use with WAM. And then we have another method that we distribute uh, the micro integrator that is the base Docker image. 
So with the base Docker images, there is no need to use the uh, WAM, uh, WAM tool. Uh, so you can just use uh, the WAM credentials uh, to log in into the WSO2 registry. And then whenever you pull from that registry, you will get uh, the WAM updated image. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can use, you can get uh, the updated. Um, so there's another question asking what the image deployed from the integration studio is. Uh, so basically the image is uh, the CF, the CF you develop. So this image uses the micro, micro integrator base image as the base image. And then uh, the, and then copy the CF and export that image as the Docker image. Uh, we have another question. Uh, the question is, what is the future relationship between traditional integrator ESB and the micro ESB, uh, the micro integrator? So I think uh, so the micro integrator is the cloud native version of the integrator. And so it's like, uh, so we are targeting two audiences here. So the with the traditional integrator, the ESP is more like a centralized for the centralized deployment so like you can you can have a centralized deployment and you can develop your different de deploy your different uh, carbon applications or the integration solutions to that one and and then govern from there uh, with the micro integrator what we have is a more developer centric approach where you can the different teams can develop uh, their own integration solutions and and use micro integrator and then deploy it separately like a more distributed uh, in a more distributed manner so that's the main uh, difference so it's like uh, a different flavors of integrations for different uh, uh, architectural types okay so uh, there's another question uh, asking whether the integration studio is backward compatible uh, so I so as I explained during the slides, yes, it is it is completely backward compatible. Uh, so basically, you should be able to <coughs> use your C apps the car the car car apps uh, that you that were developed using the previous versions of the developer studio using the integrate integration studio. But some something to note is that. Uh, the, the the new mediators that in, were introduced in EI650 uh, will not be used with the older versions of the uh, developer studio. So I I hope that uh, that question is answered. So it seems that uh, we have we, we are running out of time. Uh, so we'll be ending up the webinar. Uh, so thank you for joining. Uh, please do register to our upcoming webinar series as well. Thank you very much.